folks, sorry it's been a while since I've uploaded, I hope no one was holding their breath. As you may know, there was a technical error with my impact calculations, and I've been meaning to get this video up for months, but I've been very busy at work. What I also got wrong in the previous charts was I took an average of all my impacts between 2 and 16 metres. It was bound to fail. After looking around recently, I noticed that others were also looking into audio identification of humans and differentiating between humans and animals. Homeland Security has developed a system to intelligently recognise acoustic and vibration threats and to differentiate between humans and animals. And this one from the Army Research Laboratory on methods to distinguish human from animal footsteps. Scientists back in the 70s in Tanzania discovered hominid footprints and recently discovered more and calculated height and weight of the subjects from the footprints, stride lengths and step lengths. Sound familiar? Although we don't have footprints to measure, we still have step lengths and stride lengths and can estimate a rough height. So my hypothesis is that it is possible to distinguish between wallabies, kangaroos and unknown subjects from their step lengths and impacts. There is a distinct difference between the impacts we're collecting and it's not my imagination. If you'd like to skip past the details, go here. So to check the estimations of the previous charts, I had to go back into the forest and record all my impacts again using all four audio recorders and now have a new impact chart based on distance and volume. So we now have two separate methods for checking the unknown footsteps we're collecting when before we only had one. So these are the corrections in video number 47 at 2 minutes and 32 seconds we had a visitor to the audio recorders. This is the new chart showing multiple comparisons of the same subject at various distances compared to my footsteps at various distances. The unknown subject has blue columns, my footsteps are orange columns and the wallabies are green columns. Whatever it is seems to be lighter than myself but heavier than a wallaby. The problem with these charts is that the distances can't be checked and they may be slightly further away or slightly closer than what has been calculated because of acoustic shadows. That means trees, boulders, bushes and stumps blocking the audio signals, but the impacts can't be hidden. This doesn't mean that the subject is a yowie and you'll have to decide for yourself what it is. In video number 48 at 7 minutes and 13 seconds, we had something pass behind the gear within 10 minutes of me leaving. Here's the new chart and it's showing something very different to the previous chart. Although I can't prove it, you can see it for yourself. The chart is saying that this subject would most likely be a wallaby. At 8 minutes and 26 seconds on the same video, we had two subjects move past the gear. Here's the charts for both subjects showing the comparison to myself. Again, you'll have to judge these for yourselves. At 15 minutes and 55 seconds of the same video, we had what I would describe as a protest to me leaving the gear behind. This is also a hypothesis which means that I can't prove it, but the audio and the impacts in the new chart speak for themselves. At 17 minutes and 11 seconds of the same video we had a nighttime visitor. Here's the new chart. In video 49 there were a number of nighttime visitors which all turned out to be much heavier than myself but the subject at 9 minutes and 25 seconds needed to be recalculated. Of 
according to the data, the subject was over 30 metres away, and so the impacts were averaged to calculate the lone blue column. The compilation video I mentioned in the last video won't be happening yet because I haven't finished. There's a couple of things I'd like to check, there's a few one-off experiments I'd like to try, and there's places I'd still like to visit with the audio recorders. I've also found something odd in the audio. You may remember in the last video I went to deploy the gear and got a bad feeling. Just to clarify that, it was more like a feeling that something wasn't quite right. Weeks later I thought it may be infrasound, so I extracted the audio from the video and looked for infrasound but couldn't find any. What I did notice was microscopic frequency lines through the audio. I extracted them, enhanced them and played them back. I checked the camera footage from different times and places and found more microscopic frequency lines. This is a video I took at the edge of the wilderness. At that place I recently made a recording with a high resolution recorder and found ultrasound and very low frequency sounds. The odd thing about it all was that the sounds weren't always there. After a lot of emails I found out that these sounds are atmospheric and most of it is man-made and some of it is natural but scientists don't know what all the sounds are. When I say natural, I mean earthquakes, storms, volcanoes, waves, wind. When I say man-made, I mean transmission towers, communications and electrical interference. We may be aware of them subconsciously, though we can't necessarily hear them physically, but audio devices can record them. My audio recorders can only record a fraction of the soundscape and human hearing is limited, so the new question for me is, are there signals or calls in the forest which we can't hear? I bought two new audio recorders and four new microphones. These audio recorders have over double the range and quality of the old recorders, so one of my new goals is to collect better recordings while looking for ultrasound, VLF sounds and infrasound. Because we have new audio recorders, we need new charts, and I've already been into the forest to record myself at 2 metre increments up to 40 metres away. I've also recorded myself calling out numbers at every 5 metres up to 100 metres away. I've done this before and this will give us a distance comparison for the calls we're collecting. All I need now is to record some wallabies and kangaroos and we're right to go. This is all going to happen when it happens. I don't want to make any promises. I'm very busy at work but there's still things that I'd like to do before we wrap it up. I have had the new audio recorders out in the forest once to collect some wallabies and we collected some interesting pieces of audio while the gear was there. It is 1 o'clock a.m. Be safe over the holidays. I'll see you next year and thanks for watching.